Our next guest is Ben McKinnon. He is the author of a great uh, fiction book. I don't know if he considers it a children's fiction book. I don't. I, I think it was uh, highly entertaining, uh, very engaging, and um, inspirational on many fronts. You don't find those kind of books anymore. It's funny. Before it used to be, you could give your kids a book and say, just read this. It's a good book. Today, uh, the... Um, the school systems, at least back in Philadelphia where I am, what they're pushing out on the kids, what they want the kids to read, it is, um, it's just unbelievable in terms of the principles and values that they're pushing and they're promoting. If you want a book that pushes good values and good principles, I'm going to recommend uh, Ben McKinnon's Forests of Farallon. It is a tremendous book. I read it with my daughter. She is now 16, and uh, she can't wait for the sequel. Ben, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure to be on, Joe. I appreciate it. So, Ben, let's tell the audience a little bit about you. Uh, everybody says that, you know, almost everyone has a book inside of them. Uh, you actually took the time to put your book to paper. Uh, but tell us about you, what you've done, and, and what caused you to write the book. Oh, that's a, that's a great question. You know, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, my wife would, uh, she kind of got a good chuckle out of this because I, I was never really a reader when I was growing up. But, uh, but I definitely did have a story inside of me uh, many years ago. I had uh, several things that kept coming to my mind, and I kept thinking, well, somebody should write about this. This would be great in a book or a movie. And um, those things kept coming, and, and one night I was up late in the middle of the night thinking about it, and I thought, well, you know what, why not me? I'll, uh, I'll just pop out the laptop and see what happens. And, uh, and that was the beginning. I wrote the rest of the night, and when my kids got up in the morning, I, I uh, quote-unquote, made the mistake of reading to them what I had written, and they wouldn't let me stop until it finally was complete and out on paper. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a remarkable process, and it was really neat to pull that out and, and make it real. I have to tell you, when people think, oh, well, of course your kids are going to say, you know, you should keep writing, Dad. If you have kids, the reality is, you know, they can be the harshest critic. So it was a great sign that your kids would say continue to write. My kids probably would have said, Dad, give it up. Not worth it. <laughs> you know, stop writing. <laughs> so well, it's true. The you genre know. that you picked. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I no, please after you. The genre that you picked. Um, this isn't. Uh, it's interesting because I, I wouldn't call it science fiction. It's it's clearly fiction. But how do? What genre do you put this book in? Oh, that uh, you know, I've struggled with the same uh, the same question in my mind because it's 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 partially science fiction, it's partially fantasy, and yet I, I put a stake in reality as well, I, all by design, as I wanted the the readers to be able to relate to it and not not feel like it it was a uh, you know in a galaxy far far away. I wanted it to be no, this is right here close to home, and this could happen. And uh, but yeah, it, it does have a piece of science fiction. One of my favorite books and uh, and movies is the Jurassic Park series, where you know they're kind of bringing a piece of of history and uh, prehistory, if you will, into reality. And that was an important part of of making this book come to life. It was creating creatures that uh, used to exist but don't currently. But then there's a fantasy side of it as well, where there are special powers in a, in a special realm, and uh, you know, bringing unique characteristics and and powers to it to certain individuals that uh, play a, a significant role in in the book. One of those significant roles that I that I really wanted to make happen was, um, well. Just to give you a little, little bit of background there, there are a lot of genetic traits that people have. For example, some people can roll their tongue and others can't. Uh, some people sneeze in direct sunlight or light and, and others can't. And, and there doesn't seem to be any explanation for those traits in the world we live in. But in this book, I, I felt like, you know what, let's, let's give some reason for some of those traits. 
and uh, so they translate into special powers in this alternate realm that's found by these teenage kids. You mentioned, is it a children's book? Well, I probably wouldn't, and I guess it just depends on how old you're classifying children. I'd put this as um, teens to adults would probably be the best fit in there. My daughter is, is 12, and she's really enjoying the book, uh, has read it a couple of times now. So that's probably where I'd start with the, the appropriate age for it. Um, but but I, I would agree, too, with what you said in that, you know, you just, I, I'm a parent. We, I have seven children, and I am concerned a little bit about what's out there and what my kids are reading. Unlike movies that you at least have a rating system on, which, you know, we can debate how effective that is. But with books, you have nothing. And, uh, you know, parents don't have any idea what's inside those books often. And I, I wanted to kind of buck that trend a little bit and offer something out there that parents can be completely confident that, one, their, their children are going to enjoy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting adventure, but it's going to be completely void of any profanity and, uh, you know, any inappropriate relationships or conduct. That, that's absent completely from this, but uh, the, the fun and the adventure is still all there. We are talking to Ben McKinnon. He is the author of Forests of Farallon. A, uh, well, I'm going to let Ben tell you a little bit more about the book. Ben, we're up against a hard break. We'll be back right after this break with Ben McKinnon. We are talking with uh, Ben McKinnon, author of Forests of Farallon, and uh, I'm looking, I'm on, Amaz I, on, I'm on Amazon.com right now, and I'm seeing that the book has received a 76% uh, of people uh, who've reviewed it have given it five stars. And you can put me in that column. <coughs> Excuse me. I've read the book. It is fantastic. And if you are looking for a Christmas gift, my kids are uh, voracious readers. They love to read um, my oldest daughter has read this book. Uh, it is a perfect gift uh, for anyone who enjoys a good, inspiring book. And Ben, we've talked about mythical creatures. We've talked about some of the setting. But what really attracted me to your book was, at its core, it's about family and it's about friendship. And I, it's very analogous to me with Lord of the Rings, where when you strip everything else away from that movie, all the uh, the high tech and the great graphics and the cinematography, that movie at its core is about family and friends. And I think this book, your book, is very similar. I, I, am, am I on the mark there? Oh, absolutely. It, it is. It really boils down to, uh, you know, it follows the family relationships of uh, you know a family that starts off with a 15 year old boy and and uh, they're in a really troubled situation right now one that you'd hope nobody finds themselves in which is that his older sister went missing six months earlier and uh, you know she was just kind of the the doll of the family everybody loved her she was uh, you know very popular in school and then she's gone and uh, he's of course, you know, his life's been turned upside down now with, with his sister missing. The whole family is in turmoil. And, but he's convinced that she's not gone. And he refuses to believe everyone around him who's saying that she's, she's no longer living. Um, and uh, he, he follows his own intuition and, and inspiration in, in kind of tracking her down. He grabs a couple of his, his good friends, and uh, they they go looking for her and they find what they never expected to see and that is that there is an alternate reality or an alternate realm in in the world that we live in so you know i guess for lack of a better term they find a portal and it takes them to this uh earlier version of 
our own earth where they interact with uh, a, a primitive people who has a uh, very limited government, very uh, rudimentary government, and uh, have to face all sorts of challenges to, to find the, his lost sister. It's an incredible read, and you have children of your own. And, and tell the audience, and I don't know the answer to this question, Ben. I know you and I have spoken several times about your book. Any of the characters or situations in the book patterned after uh, or inspired by your children or events that have, that have happened in reality? Yes, I'm glad you asked, Joe. And that is, um, this was one of those ideas that I mentioned that somebody should write about. And that is that um, one of the characters that is in this book, one of the family members, his name is Daniel, has some severe mental handicaps. And uh, his handicap, his disability, has just become part of the routine of the family. They just know Daniel is different. And they've just adjusted their lives. He's, he's an important part of their family. And uh, But what's different about this book is I wanted to bring to the forefront those with disabilities to help readers and the population in general to understand that that those with disabilities aren't just someone to be tolerated, aren't just something we, we put up with and learn to deal with, but they're important. They're important to us. They're important to our lives, to our, uh, our very existence. And in this book, Daniel, <clears throat> I mentioned unique characteristics that, peop that mean something in the alternate reality where there are special powers. And Daniel, with his special needs, has incredible powers in the other side. And the limitations that he, he experiences here in this life are non-existent in that one and are replaced by some significant uh, uh, abilities that he alone possesses. And, and so really the reader is, is brought into understanding how critically important those with disabilities are to us and and it's it's fun to see that come come about in the book. I think it, I try and uh, save that a little bit, so that's a little bit of a spoiler for for your listeners right now. But um, it, it it's something that I wanted everybody to come away with, it, just a little deeper understanding and respect for those with mental disabilities. Now, as far as the pattern there, I have a 10 year old son who has a severe disability and uh, you know he's right in the middle of, in our family and and so we we work with him every day and he's learning and growing and, and uh, he's always going to be different and unique but that doesn't mean better or worse it just means different and unique and important another incredible message and you know we were just talking with the audience and and we were sharing that you know the solutions to our problems the solutions to our challenges they will never be found in washington dc they're never going to be found in uh, state capitals around the country that that truly the true change begins at home and it begins in the heart and um that process starts with bringing in good messages and good values and I think part of this is, and I think one of the, the great reasons, and one of the reasons I recommend your book is that you walk away and you don't feel that you've been preached to. And I, I don't like preaching from you know either, uh, either side of the, the political spectrum, but you read the book and it's just a good read, but you're reading about how friends help friends and how family never gives up on family. And it's like the uh, Dickens' The Christmas Story. All these values and lessons are being taught, but you never realize you've been preached to. Does that make sense? It does. You know, I, I was thinking about that. And, you know, as I've listened to your show, Joe, I think that my objective in, in writing the book is similar to probably, I don't even mean to put words in your mouth, but similar to the way your show is run, I think you... You want it to be informative, yet entertaining, and at the end of the day, you want people to be better for having 
having listened and participated. I love the way you've ended your show so many times uh, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. I apologize if I didn't say that the way you did. But, um, but the same objective I had when I, wrote, when I wrote the book, I wanted it to be primarily entertaining. I wanted it to be an adventure. I wanted people to have fun reading it. And, but at the end of it, I wanted them to, to close that last page and just feel like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm better for having experienced this book, and I'm going to treat people a little differently uh, with a new perspective. Uh, those are just kind of bonus things that I, that I wanted people to get out of it. But again, the primary objective is to have, have an enjoyable experience. I think that it stands with so many others in that genre, the, the Harry Potters, the Divergence, the Hunger Games, all of those, which some of which have content that's probably less appropriate for teenage audiences. But uh, nevertheless, this book, I think, can... Uh, meet those same expectations of adventure and excitement without any of the uh, inappropriate stuff. Again, I just, uh, Ben, thank you for joining us. We are talking to Ben McKinnon. He is the author of Forests of Farallon. That's F-A-R-A-L-L-O-N. This is a, a great Christmas gift. And in a world where we already have too much stuff, I think one of the best things we can give someone we love is um, something they can keep with them forever. And that's what books do. That's what a good book does. It's that, that part of that book stays with you forever. Forests of Farallon by Ben McKinnon. Go to Amazon.com. You can look up Ben McKinnon, M-C-K-I-N-N-O-N, or Forests of Farallon, F-A-R-A-L-L-O-N. And Ben... I know at least we generated one sale for you. My producer said uh, she jumped on Amazon and bought a copy. Oh, so fantastic. Thank you for uh, joining us. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. We'll have you back. Merry Christmas, Ben. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate your time. We'll be back right after this break. 